G'day, internet world. Uh, this is Tom from Brisbane Coast Guard, uh, and behind the camera that you can't see is a whole bunch of other people. Um, you're probably going, what the f is this video about? <laughs> um, almost. Uh, so uh, recently we were given the opportunity to purchase a new FLIR camera, so the guy in this box here, um, for our search and rescue capabilities. So some of you watching this may not know what a FLIR camera is, some people may. Um, basically, it's a thermal imaging camera. We'll explain how it does it uh, in a bit. But as far as uh, pieces of search and rescue equipment go, this is probably one of the most modern pieces of search and rescue equipment uh, we as volunteers and uh, marine search and rescue organisation have available at our disposal. Um, they're, they're a fantastic bit of kit. Uh, we have saved a few people's lives with these. Uh, and today we are the proud custodians of another one to fit to our rescue boat, CG22. So uh, a bit of something different for you. Um, as we talk about it, we're gonna do an unboxing video because uh, we painfully wanna be uh, YouTube celebrities. Um, so we're gonna unbox it all, uh, show you what it is, and then we're gonna release probably two or three more videos of us installing the camera on the boat, provisioning it, and also doing sea trials with it, showing you, the user, directly what it does and how we use it. Uh, so without further ado, we should start unboxing. So we've got a few boxes here. What do you reckon, Kerry? Small one or big one first? Big one. All right, small one it is. So uh, this guy here will be the JCU. So um, trusty box opening knife. It's not overkill at all. Uh, so JCU is the control unit for the FLIR. Um, it's basically a joystick that you use to operate it. Uh, it will probably make more sense soon. Uh, so without cutting my fingers off. Uh, a lot of money. Um, so this camera here, I should have mentioned the model number, is an M364C. Uh, I'll explain what the C means soon, but basically uh, FLIR uh, US make a whole bunch of thermal cameras for many, many applications. Um, this is their marine brand of camera, so they're designed to go on boats uh, for marine applications. Uh, and the 300 series, which this guy here, um, they have a lot of cameras in that range. So they start very introductory and work their way up to very, very advanced, uh, depending on your capabilities. This guy here uh, is at the top end of the range, um, but you do see a lot of uh, fishing boats, recreational fishing boats, do getting around with the smaller versions of these now. Um, but we'll get into that a bit later. So in the box, we have a JCU with lots of bubble wrap. <laughs> I hope that sounds great on the microphone. What's the JCU for? It is the control unit for the FLIR. So uh, FLIRs now uh, directly plug into your navigation units on your boat. Um, so you can control them off the navigation units. Uh, and you can also run as many of these as you want, actually. Um, so it's control unit. So basically it's a knob. It's like a CCTV system, basically. If you have a picture of a security guard in a back room at a Westfield, um, they've got a knob to move the camera around. That's essentially what this does. So this powers the unit up, allows you to change the settings, zoom it in and out, move it all around. Um, so the camera in here will rotate 360 degrees on its axis and also pan and tilt 90 degrees. Uh, so JCU, that's it. Uh, one cable for this guy, it's an ethernet cable. So the same cable you plug into your computer at home. Um, and it also gets its power off that cable. So nice and neat. Put that back in its box. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Craig. Um, so in the uh, JCU box as well, what do we got? Uh, so we just got some basic network cables to plug it all in. Easy done. Uh, we got a uh, waterproof network cable fitting. So when we need to make joins in the network cable, um, that keeps it nice and waterproof. And going back to the powering the JCU unit, uh, it's a PoE injector. So this takes 12 volt uh, or 24 volt power from our batteries and injects it over that ethernet cable so the JCU can uh, power up. So good bit of kit. Uh, we won't unbox that, they're pretty boring. Alrighty, on to the main one. Uh, we don't need a knife for this. So Tom, when, when would we use a FLIR, daytime or nighttime? All times. Um, so a FLIR is sensors um, infrared, I'm not going to say light, but infrared. So every object in the world puts out infrared light energy. Um, so that is heat. 
uh, and these cameras optics are specifically designed to pick that up so a normal camera like on your iPhone that you used to detect is, detects visible light uh, these cameras are designed to do infrared light so they don't do visible light they take the infrared out of the scene and they basically draw a picture using the bottom end of the heat and the top end of the heat scale and show everything in between um, so if you can imagine a person in the water is emitting heat just as the water itself is emitting heat so all those objects emitting heat and the, the thermal camera will draw the picture based on that um, so quite a common misbelief with these cameras is that they will not show people that have been in the water for a long period of time that's not true a cold person does show up on thermal imaging cameras everything emits heat even ice so um, the, basically the way these work is they take what the lowest point in the scene is they take the highest temperature as well and they draw everything in between so opening up the box we got a, another box go figure uh, so this box will be all our fittings and accessories um, so usual stand and stuff uh, obviously this camera is worth a lot of money um, and it is going into a wet salt water environment so rubber gaskets are a must uh, we have the power cable so power cable uh, obviously gives power to the unit it also outputs an analog video signal um, so if you did want to use it into a tv or something you can the analog video signal does take a bit of quality out of the image so we won't be using that and i believe also on this is an enemy 0183 connection uh, if you don't know what that is don't stress we're not going to be using it in this um, but it is it can be used with some radars on the market uh, next we have what's called a Raynet to RJ45 adapter. Basically this is what gives the network connection to the camera. So it's just uh, transferring the proprietary connector of FLIR into an RJ45 connector. Super simple. And then what is here? Pedestal. So uh, the camera itself, you have a few options for mounting it. Um, you can mount the camera directly onto like a roof or something or you can sit it on this pedestal uh, the pedestal gives you a few benefits it gets the camera up a bit higher so you can get cables underneath it also means the hole you have to cut out for the cables to run through can be quite smaller um, and generally it isolates the camera from any metals that may be underneath it so if you don't have like a 3116 base underneath it and you got like alloy or something just stops a bit of that uh, galvic what's what's the word i'm looking for stops corrosion that's what you're looking for. Cool, uh, next, we have another cable, a Raynet to Raynet cable. So that's basically just that ethernet cable, but with the proprietary ends on it again. And documents, got some serial numbers. Uh, we got more rubber gaskets. Uh, this is a B and C connector. So this gives you Video out, so if you want to run analog video, that's cable you need. We're not going to be using that in this case, but you do get it if you do want to plug it into a TV. Uh, and then last but not least, what do we get? So, stay. Mounting templates, we'll be sure to ignore those and just cut a big hole. <clears throat> uh, you do get uh, extra decals. Um, this camera does have the ability to be mounted upside down. So if you do mount it upside down, obviously the uh, decals are gonna be the wrong way up then. So I'll give you new ones to uh, put on there if you decide to do it that way. User manual, uh, which Craig's already read, and uh, warranty, warranty, very important. So uh, that's the box. Uh, so onto the main event, everyone's been wanting to see, uh, now not to drop this. So uh, styrofoam, it's always good. And then the camera itself. <clears throat> Alrighty, and we'll take one of these out. <clears throat> so flow camera, this is it. It's uh, probably bigger than you thought, but probably smaller than um, some people expect sometimes. Got to uh, hold two seconds. Uh, so I'm just chasing some foam to rest this on. Uh, if you can see, it, the fittings on the bottom are quite proud. Um, so it pays to rest it on some foam like that. Uh, so yeah, camera. Um, this camera here, like I said before, is called a 364C. The C is very important in this model. Um, I don't want to uh, break it, so we won't spin it. We'll show you another video. Um, so this camera here actually has two lenses in it. So it has the uh, thermal optic lens, the one we've just been talking about, uh, detects heat, shows heat signatures in the water. That's how we find people. 
Um, but this one also has a low light camera built into it. So a normal uh, visible light camera that you'd expect, but it's optimized for low light. So why would we want that? Well, we want it because not the thermal camera doesn't show things like boat riding or registration. And so if we want to punch in and look at boats or look at things that we want to be able to read, uh, we can do that with the low light camera. And this camera will also blend both images together and give you a low, uh, so the low light camera on top of the thermal image. So it will show you things like navigation lights in the scene um, and other stuff that wouldn't normally come through on a thermal camera. Uh, that's about it. We will um, start fitting this up. So it is going to go up very high on CG22. Uh, with thermal cameras, you try and want to get them as high as you can. That way they're above the waves, uh, especially when you're looking for people in bad conditions. The more swell there is, the more these have to go up higher to get over that swell. So this is going to be up very, very high to uh, counteract that. And um, the next video will show you uh, us installing it and provisioning it into our Furuno TZ3 system and uh, show you what this can do. I do want to thank a few people. Um, need to thank uh, Solus Trust uh, of CYC Cruising Yacht Club of Australia. Uh, they're based in Sydney in Botany Bay. Um, they provided uh, a lot of the funding for this camera. So obviously with a big purchase like this, um, it's very expensive for our flotilla to purchase it on its own. Um, they've been a big supporter of ours and other volunteer organisations for many years. Um, and we're really grateful that they could help us uh, purchase this. Uh, Brisbane City Council, Lord Mayor kindly gave us uh, money to help purchase this as well. Um, and we also want to thank you, the viewer, for watching. Uh, you know, you buy Bunnings sausage sizzles, raffles, whatever, marine assists, flares office, all those things directly contribute to helping us raise a little bit of money so that we can purchase things like these uh, to help save your lives at sea. Um, and last but not least, uh, two very important thank yous uh, to Furuno Australia. Um, they tremendously helped us get a hold of one of these and integrate it into our boat and make it all happen. And uh, Dick from QME, who also helped to facilitate the camera. Um, without everyone, yourself included, we wouldn't be able to do this. Um, and we're extremely uh, appreciative to be custodians of this type of equipment. And um, it will directly go to help save lives this winter. Thank you.